the reason he was sick was because he had stage four lung cancer and he, he, he was terminal. He knew he was going to die. He says, you know, maybe weeks to live, maybe months. I, I have no idea. At that stage, my sister had passed from, from lung cancer uh, about mm. a year, bef- about a year before. So I shared that with him and, and, um, and he just said to me, he says, Daryl, he said, the one thing I want to tell you, do not lose your passions. He so went, there's an overwhelming amount of research on movements being medicine. Why movement actually is probably the number one intervention for, for good health. You know, 50% wow. reduction in all causes of disease. So mm. all, cause, all cause mortality uh, is what's looked at as referenced uh, as um, with a 50% reduction if somebody's physically active in comparison to somebody who's sedentary. Mm. Of all causes of death, doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what you use as a cause of death, you're half as likely to die if you're regularly physically active. Oh, so in the 21st century, we pretty much can survive without being physically active. You know, we can order food at the click of a, a mouse. We can pretty much satisfy our, you know, uh, uh, basic instincts. You know, by using technology to do so. You know, by everything being very convenient for us. So there isn't a requirement to move. Um, and when you talk about it, it's so daunting when people recognize how little they're doing. Um, play just allows it to be a little bit more digestible. You know what I mean? So, so, yeah. so it, it, it seems a little bit less intimidating because for many, exercise is punishing. Yeah. It seems like a chore. So if you're yeah. playing, you know, you're piggyback carrying someone or you're playing tag, you have an oxytocin release, the kind of hug hormone, it's not the love hormone. So there's all these hormones that are chemical messengers that are sent around the body that affect our mood, our behavior, our ability to feel pleased about something. Uh, and movement enables all of those. Mentioned there was an interesting study on nostalgia uh, for older adults. So the, the research was putting older adults, 60s, 70s, and 80s, into a house and basically decorating their rooms uh, to a time where they were a teenager. <laughs> so if you only had a radio when you were a teenager, they'd put a radio in the room, they'd play the songs of your, you know, your 16th birth- birthday, um, you know, you'd have pictures of you know, your crushes on the wall, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> You know, you saw the clothing, you wore the clothing you would have worn then. Um, and they did that for all the participants. And within weeks, you had people who were walking in, kind of hunched over with walking sticks, who would, didn't need a walking stick and were kind of yeah, fully wow. up. Uh, wow. So in an ideal world, if we were thinking about what our ancestors would do, they'd be moving significantly throughout the day because they need to obtain food, they need to build shelter, they need to protect their environment. You know, they need to be aware of being, you know, not being predated. So they need to, <laughs> need to be aware of the fact that they could be eaten at any moment, you know. So so that's what we would have to have done in the past. Yeah, so it's, in the 20, it's basically a 28, it's a 28 day program yeah. for, for beginners, intermediates and advanced. So it's in effect like 12 weeks in total if you start as a beginner. Cool. Uh, it also discusses the, some of the philosophies around why we should be training as an, an animal why we should be engaging in, in quadrupedal movements, in crawling movements, what it does for the brain. It, it discusses a lot of research about oh, this. So, so me bear crawling down the street, down my high street, is pretty unusual. <laughs> but people have seen me do it so often now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that, there's that crazy guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully there'll be more crazy guys and girls. Uh, yeah. Wherever they live, will be doing some of these animal moves, um, getting their kids involved. Then the kids realize that it's okay to, to move and, and, you know, get outside and move. And whether you have access to outdoor spaces or not, you can do this sort of stuff anywhere. Don't need a gym. Yeah. Don't need gym equipment. Your best gym equipment you have is your, is your human body.